Hi RC. I'm going to try to talk about math facts. I've had a few questions and i um, just going to explain how that's happened in our house. The goal with Robinson Curriculum is to start Saxon 5-4 at age 7 where you have spent like two weeks with math flashcards learning your math facts. And uh, that's the goal. And I just like to say that's never happened in my house <laughs> with uh, three kids. Um, the first kid I started when he was six and a half. My intent was to start him at age seven, but the curriculum I had been using, let's just say I had seven subjects and uh, a big list, you know, every day for me to keep track of. It seemed I was always giving him work to do, and no matter what it was, he was done in 10 minutes, and it was a lot of interaction coming to me asking for more work when I really didn't have more work. And so finally, it was out of desperation. I mean, I had my 5-4 book, and I just thought, here, go do this. And I really had no real expectation that he was going to do the whole lesson, uh, but he did at age six and a half, so um, it really surprised me, but it was a pleasant surprise, and so I for sure did it the next day and uh, there's just no quiet place in my house to make a video and I'm outside and there's a lot of bugs flying around and the kids are making faces at me through the window so if I get distracted I think you all understand uh, where I am right <laughs> okay so my first kid started at six and six and a half and it was a total fluke and he didn't have his math facts memorized and I thought well he could keep doing the five four and we'll learn them later and he's almost 11 now, and he does know his math facts, but I didn't teach them to him, and I don't really know how he figured that out. The next child, I started her on the 5-4 book when she was 7, and it didn't go so well, and I tried it again at 8, you know, and we muddled through it, you know, half a lesson here, or, you know, basically I just tried to do something math-related, you know, um, until... Her brain developed enough where she could do the 5-4 by herself. And I was probably a little bit more lenient with her than I was with the firstborn because firstborn I was fresh from watching all the Robinson curriculum videos. I was on the forum. Everybody said, yeah, you can do it when you're seven. You can do it when you're seven. And so my little six and a half year old's going, mommy, I don't know how to do this. I'm like, ah, yes, you do. Figure it out. you got a book. You can read. So my expectations, um, of him were probably higher and uh, he did it with no problem actually um, so maybe by the time my daughter came along maybe I've lowered my expectations I don't know but in any event uh, she was about eight and a half when she started to be able to work the problems um, the, the whole lesson a lesson a day by herself and third kid just turned seven a few months ago and I started him on 5-4. Um, something I probably should have done with the second year old. No. You're going to eat what? I'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> Here they come. What? Okay, where was I? Um, third kid. He started at 7 and um, he's doing pretty good. Uh, but there's, there's two things. First thing, none of my kids knew their math facts going into uh, before they started 5-4 and for my third child when I started him on 5-4 I went through the lessons and this is this is part of the reason I didn't like the third edition math books and I use the old first edition 5-4 because the third editions are more um, changed to meet government requirements for critical thinking and all that and if you just read through the problem sets they're different. The problems are different. And I've read, you know, books about John Saxon and his whole philosophy of drill and practice. And um, so I really like the problem set in the old books. But when I read through these, this is um, a lesson in the 5-4 book. And, you know, it has like a clock problem. It is evening. What time will it be in one hour and 50 minutes from now? You know, for my little guy, you know, I just want him to learn to read a clock right now. So I scratch all that out and just say, what time is it? And where it has problems, 
here. I just rewrote this so you could see it. See where it has the number minus x, y, z? I changed that to just a straight subtraction problem. Because when you get into variables like that, that's a little more abstract. And I'm pretty sure John Saxon never imagined we would be giving these books to six and seven year olds or even eight year olds. Um, more towards the middle school when the brain starts to develop and you can, they can understand more about um, abstract things like variables. So I just go through here and change like five problems and make it real straightforward. Work this addition problem, work this subtraction problem, whatever. I take all the critical thinking out of it because he's seven. And I just want him at this point to get used to working a lesson. And I never thought about it until today, but I probably should have done that with my second child too. It might have worked a lot better than having, that was a lot of work on me to split up those lessons and it never really worked well. So basically, I guess I just try to come up with something to do math related until they can start the 5-4. Um, now with my third kid, yeah, I just go on the internet and pull out math fact sheets or some of the Saxon test forms. You know, addition facts, 100 addition facts. Oh yeah, that'll send them over the edge. You want me to do what? 100 addition facts. I'm six, mom. Okay. Maybe not all 100 of them starting out. Um, and then I went from, he got tired of doing that, so I just gave him 10 addition problems, but they were all three and four digit numbers. So you can get in a lot of math facts with a big number <laughs> like that. Get it? He figured that out too eventually. That, oh, you're getting me to do a lot of math facts doing these big numbers. Okay, so where am I? Yeah, I think so my plan, I'm thinking that my seven-year-old now will go through the whole book of 5-4 with me modifying the problems like that. And then I've got time. I can go back and when he's done with that, I'll start it again and have him do it without um, me changing the problems. And hopefully by then he'll be able to write it on, the own, on his own worksheet paper like the rest of them do. But right now, as you can see, the writing is not is not anywhere close and there's a story on that with him but not for here and another thing that occurred to me when I was in college and I took calculus one and I did okay in it but um, it was in calculus two in calculus two the first step of every problem you work in calculus two was working something from calc one and so in calc two I got a lot of drill from Calc 1. So that's really where I learned Calc 1 was in Calc 2 because I was doing the drill every day. I couldn't even start my Calc 2 problem until I'd done the, the part we learned in first the first class. Same with Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and Calc 4. Differential equations, complex variables. I never learned the thing well until I had to use it a lot which was always the next class and unfortunately you always got graded for the class you were in and not the material you retroactively learned. Anyway, my point with that is, I think it's possible that some of this stuff you might just learn by doing it. You know, surely after you've done the Math 5-4 book once or twice, you know, you're going to remember what 9 plus 5 is. Um, that said, I think it's always best to do, if you're doing Robinson curriculum, do, do it the way he recommends and study your math facts. It seems perfectly reasonable to me to be able to take two weeks with flashcards and have the child teach himself all the math facts, but um, I uh, haven't done it. And so far, so good. I'm really tempted to get my almost 11 year old and just see how well he knows them. <laughs> I know we do classical conversations and I know um, he did Memory Master this year, so I know he can chant his multiplication tables up through the 15s in order, like 15 times one is 15, 15 times two is 30. 15 times 3 is 45, etc. But I don't know if he could do them out of order or just with flashcards. It's a good test. I don't think I'm going to put him on the spot right now, but maybe after the video's over, I'll go check on that. Um, so, yeah, do it the RC way if you can. If you can't, I really, I personally don't worry about it. Um, I think they're going to get it. And uh, at least for my brain, I would learn it by doing it. And that is all I have to say, just in time because everybody's coming to get me. So, see you later.